Recently, CIG announced that some core features for the 3.23 update needed extra time to be ready for release, with cargo hauling missions, distribution centers, item banks, personal hangars, and freight elevators containing so many core changes to SARS that we're going to be seeing many legacy features and ships getting a drastic overhaul to how they function entirely, changing the relationship with our inventory and the ships we currently have in the game. Since soon gone are the days of local and ship inventories and onwards to a more physicalized inventory system with every item, if not being in your personal inventory, needing to be stored in a cargo crate or in physicalized racks on ships. So to get you prepared, here's my list for the best ships to help you get the most out of the 3.23.x update. Before we get started, I want to say thank you to Toby Eye Tracker 5 for sponsoring this video. Toby is a head and eye tracker that works closely with CIG to be natively compatible with Star Citizen, and in fact has gotten a massive update in this 3.23 patch, with the camera boost mode being reworked for better head tracking, giving you the best advantage with the new master mode system, allowing you to track and mark targets simply by looking at them. Using the Toby Eye Tracker 5, gives you the immersion of a VR headset, except without ne ever needing to wear some stupid bulky thing over your face the whole time. And unlike VR, no need to worry if you wear glasses, as the Toby will always know where you're looking with laser precision. Just stick the Toby eye tracker onto your monitor, run the installer, and Star Citizen immediately becomes infinitely more immersive. And to celebrate the release of 3.23, the Toby eye tracker 5 is currently 15% off, and they're currently running a competition to win a Toby eye tracker 5, as well as a bunch of Star Citizen starter packs with the new Anvil F7C Hornet Mark II. To enter, check out the link in the description for your chance to win or to take advantage of the 15% off while it lasts. Now, back to the video. So having played a lot on the EPTU this patch and taking into account of a lot of the ship changes that have happened over the past year, this list is going to be a little different than usual as I'm going to be giving you two options for each size category of ship, from starter ship, medium sized ship, large, and finally heavy. So no matter if you're new to the game or a veteran, there should be something key for you with a lot of these picks actually surprising even myself as many of them personally I would have never touched but seemingly have a distinct advantage in the 3.23.x update. So starting with the Nomad. Now this is one I wouldn't have thought I would have been recommending because um, I never really took this one out very much. I always found I had other ships that did a better job but the Nomad is actually great for a sort of starter ship with the new update because you've got like this is out of the light fighters. This is like, um, well, not light fighters, starter ships. It's got 24 SCU, it's got a tractor beam, got really easy access onto its sort of back here to load cargo onto from a freight elevator. Um, and on the inside though, that's where this sort of turns around a little bit because. Most other ships will have, you know, internal gun racks or some sort of storage or something that you can use, but uh, this one doesn't. And so it means if you don't have anything on you that you need at a time, say you're on here and you're, you know, you need a gun or a bit of armor or whatever that you've got in storage, there's no internal storage anywhere in here. Um, the only storage will be on that cargo bed on the outside. So that means if you don't have uh, if you're not in atmosphere or if you don't have like a helmet on, say you're in space and you need something at the back, you can't access it. Like as soon as you open this, you know, if you don't have a helmet and you're out in space, <laughs> then you're kind of flat out of luck. But if, if you've, you know, you're just going to have a starter ship, and you want to be able to move cargo, then uh, the Nomad will be good for you. But yeah, just make sure if you're taking this one out that you've got, um, at least a full armor set on if in the case you got something you might need in the back. Yeah, 24 SCUs for a starter ship is pretty, pretty decent. The Drake Cutter Rambler. And another ship that might seem like a bit of an odd pick for me for me to make, the Drake Cutter Rambler. Uh, this one I've sort of bad mouthed in the past just because when they released it, it was, you know, really marketed as, oh, it's got a bigger quantum fuel drive, but then, well, a tank at least, quantum tank, but then it just didn't. So that was like the one thing that they, 
than they could have done they didn't do. But this is almost like the complete opposite reason to the Nomad of why I like it was with the Nomad, you've got that large amount of space, but it's all on the outside and it's not convenient. Dreadcutter Rambler only has two SCU of cargo space, but everything is accessible on the inside, including you got two regular gun racks here, some pistol racks and a large weapon rack, which is uh, very rare to say in some ships. Also got at the front, right next to the bridge, you got another large one. So two large ones, which is unheard of for a small starter ship, another gun rack and two pistol racks. And you have, I believe it's this one, you got some personal storage here as well that you can use. So there is some sort of internal storage you can use to keep things. And so this is great for say, if you're just sort of doing like gun running or say you need to deliver some gear to a, a mission or some friends that are out doing stuff. Like you need to get some equipment out on site easily. This is the one for you, but you're not gonna be, you know, hauling any cargo kind of around. But as far as like, easily accessible everything's really accessible really easy to get to and now that it does actually have the extended quantum fuel tank uh it is quite a good little starter ship i reckon so in review the nomad doesn't have any physical weapon racks where the rambler is the opposite with an alarming amount of weapon racks including two of the rare large weapon racks to be able to gun run rail guns with for cargo capacity, the Nomad as a starter ship, I will give an A with its 24 SCU capacity, but for personal storage, I give it an F since it doesn't have any. Whereas the Cutter Rambler, I'd have to give its cargo capacity an F with its measly two SCU of storage, but I'd give the personal storage a C since it does actually have some unlike the Nomad. For ease of loading, I give the Nomad an A+, since it's got a really effective tractor beam and its external cargo tray is in clear sight at the freight elevators, where the Rambler, I'd give a B+, since it's not as easy to access, but with only two SEU, you literally won't be ever loading more than two boxes of cargo at a time. For ease of use, the Nomad gets a C+, since you've got to do a bunch of entering and exiting just to access everything, which in the wrong circumstance, would really get you in trouble where the rambler i give an a since everything is right there easy to get and even has gun racks right on the bridge in case of an emergency the nomad with its 9800 hull hp and three size one shields i'd rated survivability a c good shielding but poor hull hp whereas the rambler's 17100 hull hp and one size one shield I'd rate its survivability a D plus, since personally, I prefer more shields over hull HP, since you can always just regenerate your shields, where if your hull is damaged, you've got to go get it repaired or repair it yourself if you've got the equipment for it. Two very different starter ships with their own unique benefits, but ultimately the choice comes down to, do you value hauling cargo for cargo missions, or do you prefer the convenience of easily accessible gear? The Crusader C1 Spirit. Here we have the Crusader C1 Spirit, which has a cargo capacity of 64 SCU, has a okay, uh, you know, kind of way of getting cargo on. I guess it's like directly here, it's at the back of the ramp. This wing is a little kind of bit in the way to make it too easy, and it doesn't have any other kind of entry points on the side, like the Cutlass Black to be able to get stuff in, but it does have a a little bit larger carrying capacity than the Cutlass Black. As we come in here, this is the components and stuff. And then right here we have two uh, suit lockers and we've got one little gun rack here uh, for just two guns. And I think I'm supposed to be able to put pistols up here and med guns, but at the moment I can't seem to get one on there, but they're quite easy to access directly from the bridge. From the bridge you deck you have yeah, right here. Well, it really is the bridge, to be honest. And then above the beds here, we've got these two little personal storage bays. They don't have too much storage in here. It's a 200 micro SCU. So you're not going to be able to store too much stuff in here, but it's enough for each of the pilots to have a little bit of personal storage themselves. And then on top of that, we've also got tractor beam on the back. We'll also help some loading of things that are directly behind it. But you're going to be summoning this directly in your bay. 
Uh, I'm not sure if you're really going to be able to, you know, directly use that to put cargo straight into the back of your C1. But when you say you're in space or something, uh, sure, that'll be a little bit handy to do then, say, if you're recovering some, some loot or something. The Drake Cutlass Black. So here in the Drake Cutlass Black, see we've got pretty good access, not only just from the back here, but we've also got these massive side swinging doors. So, you know, if you got a freight elevator there, it's pretty straight and direct to be able to get it right over here on the cargo grid, and that's for either side. Um, then of course, it's also got a uh, tractor beam at the back here, but it actually has pretty uh, terrible placement of the tractor beam. Yeah, see, I'm sitting in the co-pilot seat here at the moment. We can get into the remote tractor beam turret here. And you see, you can't actually see into, <laughs> into the ship's own cargo bay. And on top of that, the freight elevators will probably be behind here. So it's not going to be very good at being able to load and unload gear, unless you've got, say, maybe a crew and they're just kind of like they're over, you know, to the side, just chucking things within your reach. But I mean, I guess, I guess even then you're not going to be able to hurl it in the ship. It's all because the uh, tractor beam is slightly higher on the back than it really should be. It probably should be kind of lowered a little bit. But until then, it really doesn't have the best tractor beam in the game. But it does have one, so yeah, that's something. And at the front, we've got a bunch of gun racks here, just four just sort of standard gun racks. And we have crew personal storage over in these lockers over here. So you can keep some storage directly on the ship itself outside of any crates, which is good to have. So in review, for the medium ships, both the C1 and the Cutlass Black have physical weapon racks, with the Cutlass having two more than the C1. As far as cargo capacity goes, I'd give the C1 a B plus, with its 64 SCU capacity, and the Cutlass Black a B, with its 46 SCU. Since while they're both a step up from the starter ship's capacity, they are both a far cry from something like a Freelancer Max's 122 SCU, which is in the same weight class, but I'm just not much of a fan of. For personal storage, the C1 I'd give a C plus, with the Cutlass Black a B, since it does have a slightly larger capacity, which can be the difference between fitting a whole armor set in some instances. For ease of loading, I give the C1 a B, since its wings do block a clear view of anything that's not placed directly behind it, and the Colors Black I give an A+. While its tractor beam is poorly placed, with its doors open in the back, you can pretty much load or unload from any direction with ease, making it very quick to get it ready to go at any time. For ease of use, both ships get an A, as they're both equally as easy to get in and out of, and access any gear you might have on board. For survivability, I give the C1 a B with its 67,600 hull HP and size two shield, and the Cutlass a C plus with its 37,242 hull HP and also size two shield. Very similar ships, but the difference comes down to a few things. Style being one of them, and the ability to get in and out quickly. I'd say the C1 is more of a hauler, while the Cutlass is more of a brawler. The Drake Corsair. Corsair has a generous 72 SCU of cargo space here, and it's quite easily accessible to put stuff on from the, where the freight elevator will be over that way to get it from either here easily. And going further in, other than having cargo accessible there, We've also got a whole armory here dedicated with two large weapon slots, same as the trick cutter. Um, one, two, three, four, six gun racks and nine pistol racks up there and a couple armor lockers or physical weapon racks. But one of the, the best sort of features about the Corsair for especially multi-crew people is that each um, has multiple crew quarters and in the crew quarters, they each have their own little armor locker and uh, down here, they've got their own personal storage under the bed where they can all keep uh, any gear of their own. So there's no need to put anything in a box. If you've got multiple people on your ship, they can all have their own sort of independent storage. And that's the same for each one. So that's uh, three for crew there. And at the front as well, there's also a um, 
This is like the captain's quarters right on the bridge here that has those as well. And not only is it easy just to get that gear on, you know, directly at the back ramp, but you also have this little airlock here. So if you need to just get gear directly in, it'd be quite easy to do it directly from here as well. So the Corsair, uh, as I, <laughs> in a previous um, daily drivers, I'd complained that it uh, was easy to still kind of break. They have sort of fixed the thruster HP a bit, so it's harder to get those broken. But that being said, they still can break. And when they do break, um, it's man, this thing can be wonky as hell, but it really is a great, a great ship to pull around if you're going to do some cargo and stuff, just because it's got so much, um, got so much pilot damage that it can do. It's got, you know, a great bit of storage. It's got all the multi-crew stuff you need, and it's just a really a, one of the best all-rounders in the game, to be honest. The Constellation Taurus. Now, the Constellation Taurus really is one of the King Daddies in this patch for cargo hauling because it has this fantastic uh, cargo bay here that drops straight down to the floor with a generous 174 SEU of cargo and it's quite easy to be able to get cargo directly on here from the freight elevators which would be the side there or wherever you are really like this thing's down and easy to access at any point in fact it's one of the few ships that has a tractor beam that comes down directly down here from the bridge. You can get into a little seat and it'll drop you down and you'll easily be able to see cargo either in the freight elevator or on the, the cargo bay here and you'll be able to get it directly onto the cargo grid or take things directly off and into the freight elevator pretty much from within the bridge itself. And it's out of all the ships in the game, it really does have the best placement for its tractor beam to uh, cargo placement where most other ships, it's actually quite hard to use it to get stuff directly onto the grid. But on the Taurus, it was really made to be the perfect ship for that. Taurus is also one of the easiest ships to get in and out of with the front little elevator here leading pretty much directly into the cockpit. So it means getting in and out of this thing is a lot easier compared to some of the other ships where you have to Kind of make it all the way through the length of the entire ship before you can even get you know into the cockpit seat or get to the, the back to get out of it and not only that but inside it also has these are actually armor lockers so that's generous five armor lockers for the size of the ship but the downside is that it only has two gun racks inside here so there's really not much you can do uh, on that account but it does have such a large um, storage space back here that it does sort of make up for it. It's definitely the um, the more cargo fo focused ship out of this and the Corsair, where the Corsair is clearly the more combat focused. Not only does the Taurus have a great way of loading cargo directly onto the grid there, but it also has these great number of airlocks as well, where with the new EVA, it's going to be much easier to be able to get on and you know, off ships quite easily. And if you need to get just a little bit of stuff from a freight elevator, it'll be easy to access from here. There's also one over here. Kind of do both these hatches. And then finally, there's one on the opposite side of the elevator to get on board here. So it's going to be quite easy to get on and off this thing um, pretty much at any given point. So in review, the Corsair has probably one of the best armories and physical weapon racks in the game to date where the Constellation Taurus potentially has one of the most lackluster. The Corsair's cargo capacity of 72 SCU gets a B, where the Taurus's 174 SCU gets an A+, as it's the largest cargo capacity out of all the ships, without falling into the category of larger ships that are exclusively for cargo. So it's still capable of fighting and giving as good as it gets, with a decent load on board. Corsair gets an A plus for personal storage, with each crew quarters not only getting their own inventory storage, but a dedicated armor locker, where the Taurus gets an F since it doesn't contain any personal storage at all. For ease of loading, the Corsair gets a B plus, where the Taurus gets an A plus, with its cargo bay being fully loadable and its excellent tractor beam placement making it perfect for all situations. For ease of use, the Corsair gets an A with its side elevator making entering and disembarking much quicker than most, 
while the Taurus gets an A+, with its elevator bringing you almost perfectly into the bridge, and cargo bay lowering fully to the ground, making loading or entering or exiting the ship a breeze. As far as survivability goes, the Corsair gets a B+, with its 91,000 hull HP and size 3 shield, while the Taurus gets an A, with its 137,000 hull HP and size 3 shield. Between the two, I'd say the Constellation Taurus is better suited for someone who's more interested in moving cargo as a solo pilot, as it allows you to easily get in and out with the most cargo in the quickest possible time, while the Corsair is more suited for players who fly in a crewed ship to be able to man the turrets and take advantage of the crew quarters. The Crusader C2 Hercules Starlifter. C2 Hercules Starlifter has the largest cargo capacity available currently in the game, other than the uh, Hull D. But as soon as you open up, you've got the back gate and the front gate here, and then it'll be very easily to get any cargo you need from the freight elevators directly on. And if you've got multiple people loading it, you've got both front of the back ramp for them to be able to do it from at the same time making it quite easy to get stuff on board. Upstairs of the C2, we also have a lot of these little storage unit bays all scattered around uh, this top area. And so you can see we've got quite a bit of external storage to be accessed from here. And there's also a number of them here. That's uh, radar systems and just there you go, it's another one, storage unit, storage unit, and this there. All extra places that you can store gear that can be accessed by people other than directly from a crate down on the cargo grid. Heading up closer to the bridge here is the last little spot for storage we have on the C2. On either side here, right, you can see the, the bridge right there. But on either side, we have these gun racks that can take uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight large rifles in that one. And at the top here uh, can take pistols, med guns, um, and the like. Then over here, it's, it's a, just a mirror of the previous one. And all these are easily accessible directly from the bridge. And there's also these suit lockers and escape pods right here, which although you know, suit lockers aren't online, um, it likely we will be seeing them sooner rather than later since all this sort of stuff is becoming physicalized. But this is quite good for safe being boarded while you're running some cargo. If you need any gear, it's immediately kind of right here other than having to run all the way through and then making it to the either, you know, your, your storage crates here or down in a, in a, still in a box down on the cargo grid down there. The Crusader M2 Hercules Starlifter. Now on the M2 Hercules Starlifter, while it might look like we have the exact same amount of cargo space, we do have the same amount of space, but there's not as much on the grid. In fact, this one has 468 uh, SEU of cargo that can be loaded on, but it's just as easy to load it on as the C2, having people being able to move it from both sides of the ramp here and get it in. And upstairs, like the C2, the M2 also has these storage units that can be found all here and over on the other side and I think there's yeah there's some up here too as well and the one other difference between the m2 and the c2 other than the cargo size is up here where in the c2 we had uh two weapon racks on either side now we've just got escape pods in the m2 which of course yeah we can't really use at the moment but in a trade-off for that what we do have is just down here over where there was a um like a dining hall uh we've now got a little sort of a, a, a drop pod and an armory over here a full armory and so this is where we've got these are the the same gun racks as we would have had over there but we've also got two for large weapons such as um rail guns or missile launchers so we've got four that can be kept here and we've got more armor racks over here in total. And then also this is one little spot people don't find, but there's also some extra storage up here as well. 
more personal storage where crew can keep uh you know their more kind of kit so that's the i'm kind of torn between the m2 and the c2 to be honest because the usefulness of like the gun racks being near where the bridge is for me as someone who doesn't usually play uh with a whole lot of people um it's far more convenient to be able to go and get stuff like just as directly behind me or say if i'm being boarded i can take a little bit extra time to kind of get the ship to safety and then run back and maybe get whatever i need and have those guns close by rather than having to run all the way out here and grab it there i'd say the benefit of the m2 is that if you do have a larger crew and just also i guess assuming that um the armor suit station sort of thing would come online you've got just more here and more space for multiple people to be able to, to gear up and get ready um over the c2 but as far as the gameplay the new gameplay that comes in with 3.23 on 3.23.x uh, i would probably say the c2 probably will get the most most bang for your buck since you don't need to use a weapon rack to get a weapon. You can always just have them in these personal storage bins as well. So if you needed more storage than just we can fill those weapon racks, then you can just kind of grab them from here without too much more hassle. But if it's important for you to have like a larger armory that can hold the larger weapons and you're going to have more crew on hand anyway, that'll kind of be back here, maybe doing this was sort of engineering gameplay, then maybe the M2 will be for you. In review, these two ships are probably far too similar in design than they ought to be, with the only noticeable differences being their cargo capacities and ease of use in relation to their physical weapon racks. If you fly with a limited crew and you're mostly interested in carrying the most amount of cargo in a single ship, there's no need to get the M2. Just take advantage of the C2's extra 170-ish cargo space and having the gun racks closer to the bridge. And at the time of recording, with the new in-game price rebalancing, the M2 is now almost 10 million Alpha UEC more than the C2. But if you're looking for a ship to ferry larger groups around for combat reasons and are more likely to carry vehicles than cargo, then the M2 might make for a better choice since it does have more weapon hard points and would keep your crew from bottlenecking the bridge corridor. So those are my picks for the best ships in the game for the upcoming inventory and cargo changes. Let me know in the comments below which out of those ships you'd pick, or if you can think of any other ships that may even be better suited than the ones I picked. Like this video and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this, and thanks again to Toby Tracker for sponsoring this video. Remember, links in the description below for details. And as usual, my name's Dead Leader, and I'll see you in the verse. And thank you to Granite Salvo for joining my Patreon recently. Don't worry, I'll return your car with as little soup stains as possible this time. I swear.